Hey there, Mama, and welcome back to the Mom's Overcoming Overwhelm podcast, episode number 138. I'm Emily McDermott, and I'm here beside you on this journey as we work together to declutter your home, head, and heart. As I mentioned in the last episode, I'm going to be taking a little bit of a break this summer from your usually scheduled content. And today I am bringing you an interview that I recently had on my friend Michelle Bird's podcast. She is at the Busy Vibrant Mom. And if that name sounds familiar, I just had her on my show most recently in episode 136. So if you check out the show notes today, you can find out all about Michelle. But she is a wife, a mom, a gym rat, podcaster, coffee enthusiast, health coach, extrovert, and lover of people, also the host of The Busy Vibrant Mom, and she really helps working moms find the tools they need so they can have more time in their day to pour into their kids, their marriage, and themselves. And in this episode, I'm talking about how to make decluttering with kids fun. And if you have kids home for the summer, this is a perfect time to help them declutter and organize their rooms. So we go through some tips about that. I do want to remind you that we are in the final days of the review giveaway. You only have until June 30th to enter. All the details are in the show notes. I'm giving away two Amazon gift cards in the amount of $50 each. Right now we have about 14 people that have entered, so you still have a really good chance of winning. And I will be announcing the winner on the podcast episode that is coming out that following Tuesday, July 2nd. So thank you so much for your support. And what do you say? Grab that notebook and pen and listen in to my conversation with Michelle Bird. Hey there, mama. Are you tired of all the stuff crowding your home calendar and mind? Do you wish you could say goodbye to the endless to do list running around in your head? Want to declutter but don't know where to start? You're in the right place. Welcome to Mom's Overcoming Overwhelm, where you will find proven and practical solutions to declutter your home, head, and heart. Hi, I'm Emily, a wife, boy mom, and simplicity seeker. I struggled to get pregnant and felt overwhelmed until I discovered decluttering could create the physical and emotional space I needed to become a mom. Now two kids later, I've transformed my life and motherhood by developing simple systems around decluttering, capsule wardrobes, kid stuff, cleaning and tidying, meal planning, time management, and more, and I can't wait to share them with you. If you're ready to reclaim the time and energy you crave, be present with your kids, and finally enjoy the life and motherhood you so deserve, let's kick overwhelm to the curb, shall we? Grab your lukewarm coffee, your notebook and pen, and clear off some counter space. Let's do this. Emily, thank you for joining us. Yeah, Michelle, thanks for having me back on the show. I'm really excited to talk about this topic because this is something I have front of mind. The time of recording, my kids have a couple more weeks of school and I'm kind of like, ah, (laughs) so I need it too. I need good reminders of this too. Yeah. Summer is a different season. It's a different animal. It changes. The things that worked suddenly don't work. I feel like summer, you're May is super busy and you're just running on a treadmill, like to try to get to the end of the year, you're there's parties and there's stuff and there's things. And then all of a sudden you get like dumped into summer and it's like, okay, here we are. And you have to suddenly then re-engage and figure out, wait, this thing I was doing isn't working. And it's really tricky, especially with trying to work and also having kids at home. So what are some fun things that you have? So one cool idea I have is I've already, I've talked to my kids, but they each want to kind of revamp their room. And so Mm -hmm. now when they're home over the summer, they're kind of like, okay, I have some time to look at my room to either clean out my room or to put new things in. So how do you kind of declutter with your kids at home? I guess this is a two-part decluttering kind of their room and then also decluttering your home, your space. Yeah, sure. And we can start with the room since that is where our kids spend a lot of time. (laughs) And I'm kind of outside the norm now, just for reference, my boys are um, six and eight, but 
they actually do not have much in the way of toys in their room. And we have toys more in a shared area. So they do have some things in there. My oldest is going through a Rubik's cube phase. (laughs) So we have multiple Rubik's cubes, but I would say I typically recommend when we're looking at a room, any room that we look at the three F's and the three F's are, how do I want it to feel? How do I want it to function? And how do I want it to flow? And I'll explain that just a little bit. And I think that's a great way to approach it with our kids because it's a great opportunity to kind of reassess and go, okay, how do I want this room to feel? Like what functions do I want for this room? Meaning like I want it to be a place of rest. I want it to be a place where I can just kind of be by myself. I want it to be a place where I can read, but maybe your kids do play in their rooms, but right now it's so messy and disorganized. They can't really do that. So we want to start with the feel and then functions kind of related to that. Like they need room to be able to get dressed and to sleep and to read and maybe play. And that's probably about it. Maybe doing homework during the school year. And so you want to see like what in the room is helping that and what is hindering it. And when the flow, that's more like being able to move around your room from one activity to the next. Like, can you do that without tripping on things (laughs) or are you constantly tripping on everything? And I'm in a townhome, so our bedrooms are pretty small for the boys' rooms. That's one of the reasons that I don't have toys in there. It just, it does not like allow for it because of the space. So I think starting with those three questions, depending on the age of your kids is a great place to start. And then we can talk about that a little bit. And then I have some more tactical recommendations for like how we could go about decluttering in their actual room. I love that. I haven't ever thought of how you know, how they want it to feel, how they want it to function. That's really breaking it down a bit more. I always just go in there with a big trash bag, you know, energy, like (laughs) let's get rid of a bunch of stuff and then you'll have more room and you don't need these toys. Let's get rid of them. And so coming in with a different feel of how do you want it to feel? What do you like about your room? What are you done with? Because, you know, as your kids grow, you're like, oh, you don't play with this or you don't like this anymore. Like my, one of my kids was like, I don't really need my train sheets. I don't really like this comforter that has a train on it. I want like no pattern. I want to like not little kid anymore. I want to, you know, kind of jump up a little. Mm -hmm. It's just interesting to, to like dig a little deeper of what do they really want it to look like and feel like? Yeah. And from a function standpoint, I've worked with clients where, for example, they, there was a bed in the room, but it was like covered in stuffed animals. So it wasn't functioning as an actual bed. So then the question is, okay, do we even need this extra bed in there? Like, could that space be used for something else like space to play? Could you put a bookshelf in there and have a little reading nook? Could you have a desk? Like looking at what your priorities are as far as like how the room is being used and then being able to make those decisions. And I want to kind of jump into also like the tactical of decluttering with kids. And this goes for grownups too, but I always recommend not making decisions about things in the room that you're in. If it's very cluttered and disorganized and messy, because it's very easy to get distracted because you're starting on something and then you see something else in the room. And then you kind of want to jump over to that and kind of like, you know, clean that up or do whatever. And so if you're able to pick some sort of subcategory in your room, so maybe for your kids, they want to start with their books. And so we're just going to be taking the books off of the bookshelf or whatever, taking it out of their room. Maybe it's going to a dining room table. Maybe it's just another room in the upstairs that you can kind of lay stuff out. And then we want to use the artificial boundaries, you know, the container concept, which I may have talked about in our last episode, but you have that boundary and then you're making decisions about what goes back based upon the boundary and based upon what you use and love. For kids, I make it a game depending on their age and I call it love like maybe no. So you start with what you love. Oh, and you have that. what you like. Yeah. And then when you start getting to those maybes and the no's, when this starts filling up, 
then you say, oh, well, this is starting to fill up. So what do you want to do with these maybes? And they might say, oh, we should donate those. Or they might say, I'm not sure if I still want that or not. And then we have the out of sight, out of mind bin, which is where you put something out of sight, out of mind for a certain amount of time, experiment with less. And then if they don't ask about it in you know a month or two, then maybe you can donate it. But that's a great way, regardless of the category, it could be books, it could be toys, it could be clothes, trying to think of other things that might be in a kid's room. But those are probably the main categories. And then you can kind of just use those artificial boundaries to make decisions and experiment with less. And that really helps them make decisions. So then it's second nature to them to be able to do this in your home, which is a great skill to teach your kids, right? Yeah. I love that. I love the idea that you're, it's almost like, you know, when we go tackle a space, we don't try to tackle our entire kitchen. We do a drawer or we do a closet or we do a smaller space. So it's that same energy and way of tackling it that you're going to their kid's room, your kid's room and like, we're just doing the books yeah. <laughs> or like we're just doing the art supplies that are on your desk or we're just doing this one group of toys. Yeah. It's really helpful because the kids get overwhelmed just like we do. And in some cases their capacity and attention span might even be less, you know, <laughs> than ours is. And so if you can say, okay, well, we're just really doing this for 15 minutes. We're going to set the timer Actually, I can send you the links, but I have some decluttering playlists. One is a secular one and one is a faith-based one. And so you can put on your decluttering playlist and say, okay, well, when the playlist is done, then we can be done with this category of stuff. And it just kind of makes it more fun. And also I find making it kind of like that game, like the love, like maybe no, it makes it really fun. And my kids do it willingly and they do it easily. We do it, especially with their trinkets, their treasures, which I use in air quotes. Oh gosh, so all the little tiny things that they bring home and like put in a box and you're like, Oh, <laughs> yeah. so yeah. we have a limited oh, no. shoe box. Yeah. We have one little shoe box. It says, you know, Sean's treasure box. And every time they come back from a birthday party or some sort of holiday or whatever, and you have all the little trinkets, then we say, okay, it's time to play it. Love like maybe no. They take everything out of the shoe box and they start putting it back in. And when it gets full, then they normally throw away what they don't want because it's not really donatable stuff because right. it's just kind of junky, you know, but like they're used to like doing that. Half eaten something and like, <laughs> a and like you know, or some like, like tiny action figure that doesn't have all its parts. Yeah. Or like that really special rock. You're like, right. okay. <laughs> but yes. the other piece of it to think about for artificial boundaries is that you're wanting to create a boundary that makes sense for what value you place on that thing. Okay. So that treasure box is a perfect example. Am I going to have this humongous, huge bin for all of this junk? No, because I don't want to give that much space to all of that junk, I'm going to have a limited shoe box. And then there's not even a discussion about getting a larger bin. Like that doesn't even come into the conversation because it's a limited amount of space and we make decisions based upon this limited amount of space. So you want to make decisions on the amount of space that you give to something based upon how important it is to you and your capacity to manage it. So that's why oh, cool. we want to bring that capacity conversation in with our kids too, because they could have a closet that fits like 50 shirts and 50 pairs of pants. That doesn't mean that they can manage that. And I know my kids can't. So we do a limited wardrobe because that's what they can handle, like their capacity emotionally and mentally to handle it. Not because our closet couldn't fit it, if that makes sense. Yeah. And that is a really huge step and thing to realize. I think it's a really big thing to teach your kids that just because you have a giant closet doesn't mean you need to fill the giant closet and to realize, I think your capacity, it's almost like overeating or figuring like, oh, well, I have this space in my house. I have a giant house. I can just fill it up with all these things, but then it's your capacity to manage all those things. Yeah. I think that's huge. That's a big thing to teach them at this age of, well, now you have to manage 
all the stuff in the closet. And that seems like a lot. Maybe we don't need all this. Yeah. And I think that it's something, it just really serves them so well throughout childhood and into adulthood, because we want to be teaching them to live within their means, you know, financially, we're teaching them to take responsibility, to have these skills and values of stewardship, that we're taking care of the resources that have been entrusted to us. And so you can't really do that if you have so much that you can't manage it. And I find with a lot of parents, they say that their frustration is that their kids say, I don't know where to start with cleaning up my room. And it's probably because they're exceeding their capacity because there's just too much in there. It's not that they're lazy. It's not that they're trying to be difficult necessarily. I say necessarily because sometimes kids do try to be difficult. <laughs> Let's be real. But you know, kids, I think, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. But for the most part, it's probably because they just feel very overwhelmed in the space. And again, we go back to the initial question, like, how do we want this room to feel? Well, we don't want a feeling so overwhelming that when mom says, hey, I need you to clean up your room, they just flop on the floor like a wet noodle. And they're like, I don't know how, you know, we want to make sure that they have a limited amount of things that they feel comfortable, that they can be responsible for those things. So yeah, tons of life lessons that we learn just from decluttering and organizing our bedrooms, right? So much. Yeah. I remember I used to teach my kids how to like declutter and we'd go through things and, and then they'd find like, especially with all their art supplies. Oh, two of them. Well, that was some of the other one, kind of a little stuff, but one of them has like bins by his desk and it has like different colored book, coloring books and all kinds of stuff and notebooks and whatever else. But he'd forget that he has certain things because it'd be so packed and so yeah. full then once we went through it, we started taking things out of like, do you need this? Do you like this? Do you want to keep this? And walking through, making decisions of look at all the, what is this in here? Some stuff he was like, oh, I didn't even know that's in there. I don't want that. <laughs> or sometimes it was, oh, that seems cool. I'll play with that later. Yeah. And I think one of the other tips that I had just about decluttering with kids at home in general, in different parts of your home, is that while they're doing a certain activity that you can kind of declutter as they're doing that activity, but not kind of kind of doing it a little bit secretly, meaning there's a two part to it. They have their bookshelf and they decide that they're reading a book. Okay. And then you are looking at the bookshelf and you think to yourself, wow, they haven't read this in like six months. They haven't touched this in like nine months. You can very quietly without saying why you're doing it, put some things in a pile just to the side. Don't have to say what you're doing. And then you can either later on kind of talk to them about it, or you can even do that out of sight, out of mind bin and just kind of experiment and see if they even ask about it. Honestly, I'm thinking about going, we usually do about 90% library books here. I'm thinking about even going closer to hundred percent because my kids will not, they don't want to read books multiple times and that's okay because we have a very robust library system here where I'm at. I'm very lucky. So I don't mind going, especially in the summer, going to the library, like, two times a week and just getting new books. It's an activity for them to kind of get them out of the house. And then they're constantly getting new books without me having to have the inventory, right. Of all of these books. So if we can, like, while they're doing art projects, you're in the art bin and you're like, Oh, we have broken crayons and here's duplicates. And did you even know that you had this? And you can kind of have that conversation with them in real time then you're not having to put special time aside for decluttering. It just ends up being part of like the rhythm of your day, which makes it a lot easier for everyone, I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I found that my daughter is great at declutter. She'll go and do her own thing. She's like, oh, I need to clean out this drawer. So she cleaned out an entire drawer. And then she was like, look, mom, look what I did today. And she like, cleaned out a drawer. She's like, then I'm going to tackle this other drawer that I haven't like looked at. It has a bunch of sewing stuff in it. She hasn't done, but the boys are a little bit more like one of them doesn't like anything touched. Do you have a kid like that? Who like wants everything exactly the same. And so it's like, you know, pulling teeth to be like, are you sure you want that up? Yeah. <laughs> You've had that there for a really long time and it's just a coloring page, but okay. <laughs> 
right? There's some that are like really into it. Some are like, "Mm, don't want anything changed at all ever. Yeah. I were like in the middle. Yeah. I do have in each of the boys rooms, they have a cork board where they can like display, you know, their artwork. And so then when they get something new, they make decisions about what they want to switch out, which has been really helpful. But yeah, I have huge Lego fans in my house. So Sean, my youngest brought up a bunch of the Lego vehicles he made, which I was trying to like put in a bin. And he's like, no mommy. And he puts them all on his dresser. He's like, look, doesn't this look great? And I'm like, yeah, you know, because yeah. <laughs> I get really anxious when surfaces are covered with a bunch of stuff. And then it's really that kind of like balance between, yes, we want our kids to have their personality and their autonomy. But then when we talk about the function aspect of their room, like is covering your dresser with all of this stuff, allowing us to put other things on there we need, like your water bottle for at night, you know, like that kind of stuff. So it is a balance, but I think that once kids are used to having to go through stuff and declutter on a regular basis, it becomes more second nature for them that things are not static. Like they are fluid as far as like the stuff that they have and then letting go. And it's not like, Oh, I have this and I'm having it forever. It's a little bit easier because they're, they're more used to it. Right. I think that's totally true. Cause I know when they were younger, it was something to do and how to connect. And I would be like, let's just go through your room. (laughs) (laughs) And we just hang out and go through all their stuff. So they got used to that, but we haven't done it as much now they get older, but they still, as you said, they've learned that and they'll do it on their own a lot of the time. But I love all your tricks of like, I love your playlist of an idea of like, we're just going to do this one spot and we're just going to have fun and kind of make it a game. So many great tips of things to play the like love, maybe no game. And definitely the out of sight bid. We have one in the garage. Yes. <laughs> that I like put as much stuff, trinkety stuff as I can, <laughs> right? All the things that come back from the birthday parties that you're like, oh. oh, I know. And I think that also sometimes if you are like, oh, I'm never going to get anything done because the kids are here. And it's more like you might have your own decluttering to do, but they're like all around. I am a huge fan of kids podcasts and we just have our smart speaker at home. And then you know, we love circle round and there's a bunch of other ones that are like 15, 20 minute stories. And my kids will more likely play nicely (laughs) while they're listening to that. And then I can do like a 10 to 15 minute decluttering job and it doesn't require me to have screens. So it's kind of like they're engaged, they're listening, they can play quietly or do something else. And then, you know, so if you even within, I know that we are used to looking at Apple podcasts for our own (laughs) podcast, but if you go someplace like Apple podcasts and look at the kids and family charts, then usually you can find some of those story based podcasts for kids. And those are really great for giving you a little bit of breathing room. If you want to do some of your own decluttering during the summer. I love that. Do you have any other tips of like, okay, so my kitchen, you know, is okay, but there's a couple spots, you know, that build up and then things are all over there. And that's like the spot you want to tackle. How do you tackle that with also trying to manage kids and have everybody at home? Yeah, (laughs) it is challenging. It is. I mean, it's always kind of holding it with the, like, this is not going to be exactly how I want. And just like knowing that any decluttering counts, like it all adds up, it all counts. So I usually try to figure out something that the kids can do that is engaged, that they're interested in, that doesn't require me for that 10 minutes or so. And sometimes we do like kinetic sand and some more of like those kind of sensory things. My kids are getting old enough that they can like go outside, you know, for 10 to 15 minutes and ride a bike around or, you know, ride their scooter and come back. But I would say 
the podcast thing really helps because then it's like, I don't have them, their sensory, like mom, 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 while you're trying to get something done. And it's kind of like a slight distraction, but those are usually the things that I do, but honestly, you need to put on some bluey or whatever, go right ahead (laughs) and then just tackle that drawer, like set your timer. I actually, in my Facebook group was just giving some tips about how to limit distractions while you are decluttering. And one of them set a timer and just know like, okay, if I can do more great, but if not, it's okay. And have go back bins. So if something belongs on another floor of your house, just have a basket or a bin to put that in. Do not go to that other room at the time, stay focused. And also if you have like a thought come, oh, I have to figure this out or, oh, I have to order this. Oh, I have to do that. Instead of kind of like putting that on your phone, which could distract you, just have like a sticky notepad or a little notebook next to you, write down whatever comes into your head and then continue on with your task. So that helps you stay focused on that one drawer or whatever decluttering task that you have in that 10 to 15 minutes. And then you can feel like you actually accomplished something, which is always a great feeling, right? I love the fact that you said any decluttering counts. Like if you yes. only get in five minutes, that's okay. That you got five minutes. That still counts. Like I think oftentimes we set the bar really high or we think we're going to go do lots of stuff or we have higher expectations. At least I do. Like I'm going to clean out these 15 drawers when like I only have, you know, 20 minutes and it's yeah. clearly not going to happen. And then I feel bad. Like I didn't get to all these things I wanted to do. But I love the fact that like any decluttering counts. If you get five minutes, that's okay. Yeah. Also, I always say like moldy leftovers counts as, you know, and also your phone, like if you keep a lot of photos on your phone and then you just happen to have like 10 minutes where you're in a waiting room or something, just go through your photos and delete those extra photos. Like that counts as decluttering. It's digital decluttering and it's a way to kind of manage things and keep things under control. So I always like to encourage people because sometimes you think it's an all or nothing. It needs to look a certain way or it doesn't matter or I shouldn't even start. And I'm all about the imperfect like five to 15 minutes, do what you can, because it's all going to help you have those benefits of decluttering that we talked about last time, like the less stress and the more peace and just having that physical, you know, and mental sanity and peace and everything that we crave as busy moms. Yeah. I love that. There are so many benefits to actually decluttering and not having to manage all that. I think we We oftentimes think, oh, I don't have time to declutter. I'm too busy. I don't have time to do that. Can you just talk a little bit more about the benefits? Because I think a lot of people forget all the really important things. So just run through some of them quickly. Yeah, sure. Well, and I think part of it is you thinking like, what would a clutter-free home mean to me? Like, what do I want to feel like in my home? You know, I want to feel peace. I want to feel connection. I want to be able to rest. Like all of these things are benefits because clutter, it impacts our sleep. It impacts like whether we eat junk food or not. (laughs) It impacts our stress and our cortisol levels. It impacts our anxiety because it's a visual stimulus overwhelm. And so if you're very sensitive to your environment, like I am, it can cause an increase in anxiety and stress. And so also, you know, your brain sees clutter as undone tasks. So you have like the mental component. And I was also talking recently about the invisible load or the mental load of motherhood, just everything that we have to remember when it comes to our responsibilities and roles and the less clutter you have, the easier it is to kind of manage the inventory, you know, that we have in our homes, but then also with appointments and activities and all the other things. So there's so many benefits, but it's really asking yourself, like, what kind of life do I want to experience in my home? What do I want my kids to have as memories as being in our home? What's the legacy of their childhood? Is it that we're always busy and rushed and things are messy and we're always saying like, hold on just a minute. And, you know, is that the legacy we want to leave for them or is it one of peace and connection and joy and all of that? I love that idea of just what is the legacy you want to leave? And I think that's, as we've said, it's just being mindful of 
that your stuff does have an impact. As you said, the mental load of seeing stuff everywhere, that visual clutter. I completely agree. I hate cluttered services because things that are left out means I have to do something with them. And then it goes on my to-do list mentally, right? Yeah. And so I think realizing that it took me a while to realize, oh, that's why I feel so stressed when things are all over the place, right? But you have to really think about that. Yeah, that's so true. So fun. Well, I love the idea of leaving a legacy and all the things. So thank you so much for coming on today. Where can people find you? And also, do you have any other amazing benefits that like we haven't really talked about or, or something else that came to mind as we were talking? Hmm. Well, let me tell you how you connect with me and then I'll see if I can figure out any other benefits. But so anywhere you're listening to this podcast, you can find my podcast, Moms Overcoming Overwhelm. So you can check me out there. And I think just, you know, I've been on this journey almost 10 years now. I realized, which seems like a really long time to be simplifying and decluttering, but I will say that making room or what has mattered in my life has had a huge impact on my emotional health, on my mental health, how I interact with my family. It has been, you know, life-changing and culture is going to tell you that we need to buy more, to do more, that, you know, what you are right now isn't enough. And you really have to tell yourself that that's not true and be able to do some of these, you know, habits and the things we talked about so that we can make room for what matters to us. And it's a lifelong journey, but it's really worth it. So happy to help any of your folks with any of their decluttering needs or mindset shifts or any of that, that we need to make so that we can make it a priority. Yes. Emily is amazing. So I highly highly recommend her podcast. If you want some really fun tips and tricks and just more of what we've been talking about here today, she is great with, I just love all your ideas of things and how you just make it really simple from having a fun playlist to play, making it a game, just all the fun things. So thank you so much for being on today and we will keep in touch and all Emily's information will be in the show notes down below. You can reach her and reach out to her. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me, Michelle. It was great talking to you. If you like today's podcast, here's what you can do. Just take 30 seconds to leave me a review. I know you're a busy mama. You're overwhelmed, in fact. But 30 seconds of your day makes such an impact. I'll be blessed by your words. They'll definitely make my day. And who knows, you might be entered for this month's giveaway. An Apple podcast, scroll down to write a review. Thanks so much for your time. I'm so grateful for you. 